Hey guys, welcome back. So this video, I'm going to go over a previous setup, which was my compound turbo setup. So there were actually several iterations. So the original setup, we had a small front turbo in the front. So this is, you know, the new setup. But the previous one, we had a eBay GT28 turbo in the front. And then we had an eBay GT45 turbo in the back of the car. So all the way behind the wheels, I basically cut the trunk section out and it went back there. So we had big GT45 in the back. That was a 68 millimeter inducer on the compressor and the turbine was huge. I don't know what it was, but it was giant. It had a T6 uh, flange with a 1.05 AR. So that was a giant turbo. That thing probably weighed 50 pounds. And in the front, we started off with a GT28. I don't remember the exact specs, but it was like a 47, 48, 49 millimeter, something in that range. And it had a, I think it was a 0.64 AR. So the thinking of that setup was that I sized the front turbo to spool quickly, and then the rear turbo to basically prop up the top end power. So it would kind of drive like a regular turbo Miata, but have way more top end power up at the seven, eight, nine thousand RPMs. And that's pretty much what happened. That setup drove really well. So around 4,000 RPMs, the car would just start building boost. You know, that 4,000, 5,000 range, it was just spool, spool. I uh, think I started off running it around 18 pounds or so. I had a... So I tested a lot of different things to kind of find out what works. I wasn't... This was done a few years. I think it was in 2017 when I built this. There just wasn't a lot of info on gasoline compound turbo. So I tried several things, but we ran the uh, balanced for a while. So we would run the front turbo and the back turbo at equal pressure ratios. Uh, so the front turbo is making 18 pounds of boost. And then by doing that, you know, you'd get your huge increase in torque around four grand and it would pull up to about seven grand. And at seven grand, making 18 pounds of boost from the motor, the back turbo would finally make about one pound of boost, then two pounds of boost, three pounds. It really started to come online starting around 7,000 and then probably by close to eight it would actually be at full boost in the back and if you have a you know flat shift you can keep the boost up during gear changes so the car was a six speed back then so that worked it worked fairly well it actually did what I intended it to do what so the intent was I wanted it to spool similar to a conventional turbo setup uh, for your mid-range so you have nice torque but then have some top end power that was bigger more powerful than normal and it did exactly that so i use this virtual dyno software the, you just take your ms3 you can use a data log and type in the numbers tell it what gear you're in and all that and we we had numbers like i think even in the very beginning it was putting down 400 wheel not even with that much boost and <clears throat> we got it up to five a little over 500 wheel at one point so it ran great. The problem was, I say the problem, so you can never stop chasing it, right? So it seemed like I had a great setup. I had a setup that spooled similar to a 300 wheel horse Miata, but it had the power of a 500 wheel horse Miata. So you're probably thinking like, what's wrong with that? Well, I just wanted more mid-range torque and response. I thought, you know, thought I could get more. So what I ended up doing was I turned the front turbo I turned it up so I got it up you know instead of just 18 and 18 or 20 and 20 I would bump it up so I'd make the front turbo do more work and the back turbo do less work so I remember running it at a uh, 25 pounds on the front turbo and then 15 on the back for a total of 40 and that actually worked a lot better so what would happen is you know the front turbo would spool up quick the car would have more mid-range torque which is nice and it was faster and then in addition to that, because you now you're running more boost, you're moving more air through the engine. So now the back turbo lights off quicker. So what would happen is the front turbo would spool and the car's faster, but not just from the front turbo spooling. But then in addition to that, now the back turbo is spooling quicker too, which just makes the car even faster. Uh, so that's what would happen. I would run the front at 25 and the back at 15. Well, now the back only has to come up to 15. So it, it doesn't have to make as much boost and it's got more air going into it. So it just it worked a lot better and I kept doing this I ended up at probably 28 or 30 on the front turbo and what quickly happened was I killed my front turbo I, in fact I may have killed the front turbo at 25 now that I think about it the first one 
Uh, yeah, there's a whole story. I killed three turbos. So the first one, that GT28, I think I was running it around 25, maybe a little higher. But I was revving the motor to 9,000. In fact, in the virtual dyno, the car made 94% of peak power at 9,000 RPMs. Now, there's no way Miata motors breathe that well. It was just artificially making that power because the top end was getting propped up by that rear turbo. Uh, I'm sure it had very low back pressure with such a large hot side on it. So that was our first setup, and we ended up tearing up that front turbo. I'm sh I overspun, overspun it really bad, so we can blame it on being an eBay turbo, but I was pushing that thing way off the map. If you looked at a Garrett uh, compressor map, I was, you know, half a bus to the right of the choke flow line. So, okay, kill the front turbo. Well, after it died, I had to think about why did it die. And the obvious thing, when I looked into it, I said, okay, I was overspinning this turbo. Now, I should have known that. That was, you know, oops. I should have known better. But, you know, sometimes you get carried away with a car, you want to go fast, and things happen. I have a hard time controlling my boost levels on cars. So after realizing that I basically overspun the front turbo and that's why it died, it failed the bearings and dumped oil everywhere and the wheel hit the housing. So after I killed the front turbo, I said, okay, that's a, we can solve this problem. We'll just get a bigger front turbo. And that way the bigger front turbo can, you know, sustain more power without dying. So that's what we did. We got a GT30, well, this is an eBay turbo again. We got a GT3076. It had a, I think it had a larger hot side on it. I ran two different ones, so I don't remember which one was first. No, I got the bigger one first. So I put like an 8.6 hot side on it, T3, uh, instead of T2. So I had to get a different manifold. I was running a cast iron manifold the whole time, funny enough. So we put the T3 turbo on there, 8.86 hot side, bigger compressor. Don't remember what it was, but whatever a 3076 is. So we put that on and drove it. And it was kind of a worse turbo, if you ask me. <clears throat> so it didn't spool nearly as good as that smaller turbo. It must have been a good size bigger. So it really hurt the low-end performance and the mid-range torque. Now, as you can expect, when that bigger turbo did spool, it had a lot of power. So from 5,000, 6,000, that range, that bigger turbo, once it was lit off and up to full boost, it was fast. It was faster. And it had a, I could run that turbo harder. So the smaller turbo, I think I kill, I think I started to kill it probably after I went above. If you look at the compressor map, once I was going above about 18 PSI, I was probably killing that front turbo, the original GT28. And the reason is because I was running it to 9,000. If you only revved it to seven, that's one thing. You're over it, you would be, you know, approaching choked flow, but I was running it all the way to 9,000. So a lot more mass flow trying to go through that turbo and it just couldn't keep up. So once I got a uh, GT3076, I was able to run it at 20 pounds, 25 pounds, and it didn't kill the turbo. And that was nice. I drove it that way for, I don't remember how long, but for a little while. And it worked good. And then, of course, the obvious happened. I did the same thing I did last time. I said, man, you know, if this front turbo was running more boost, the back one would light off faster, and it would probably make the car quicker. Uh, the response was a lot better. So I tried that. Turned up the front turbo. I think I ended up around 30 PSI, and it was way quicker. You know, when that turbo got up to 30 pounds, as soon as it hit full boost, the back turbo immediately started spooling. It didn't really matter what RPM you were at. That GT3076 with 30 pounds of boost moved enough air to spool the GT45. So that was fast. Uh, and then the turbo died. So I just bought another one at this point. I said, all right, let me just bolt another one on here and keep going because they're cheap. They were under... They were, I think they were 200 bucks or less. I think they were even less than 200. They were very cheap. So I just bolted another one on there, but this time I got a different uh, AR housing. <clears throat> I got a, I think a 0.63 instead of the 8.6. And I put that on there and it did help spool. And it hurt the power a little. It didn't make as big a difference as I thought it would. It did hurt it a little bit on power, but it spooled noticeably better. Um, so that was nice. And... That one suffered the same fate as the first one. I turned the boost down, I drove it, and then I turned it back up because I wanted to go faster and I blew it up again. I know. So that's three dead turbos. The GT45, to its credit, had never failed this whole time. So at that point, you've killed three front turbos. 
Now what? Well, what you see now, I had an EFR 7670 just chilling, hasn't been using it. Uh, it would not just bolt right up though. So back then, oh, let's see. Oh, I did leave one thing off. So while we were running that, uh, that last turbo, we did make one change. We put this manifold on here, which you can't really see. Sorry, the lighting's bad, but it's a tubular four into one header. All the pipes come down, make a shit, and you little scoops back up to a flange. So we did do that with that last turbo, and that actually, the manifold made a big difference, funny enough. Not in spool, but in power. That was a noticeable difference in power. I think I data, lo data logged, I had to add 14% more fuel just to get my AFRs back where they were at the same boost level. So manifold made a big difference in horsepower. So, okay. So we killed that third eBay turbo. We decided to put this on there because we had it. We already had the EFR. So we put that on and it was pretty good. This actually spooled a little bit better than the eBay Turbo. I actually thought this would spool way better, being all fancy EFR. Now this does have the 8.3 or 8.6 hot side, and I had come from the 6.3. So basically this EFR Turbo, even though it had a bigger hot side, was actually spooling a little bit better than the smaller hot side eBay Turbo. Maybe that doesn't surprise everybody, but I was surprised. So, but there was one other difference. <clears throat> Even though this spooled better, it was making more power. So every pound of boost, if I was making two pounds, three pounds, five pounds, this turbo was moving more air at the same boost level. So I actually had to retune the whole car. It was noticeable just from the driver's seat before I retuned it or even paid attention to the AFR. I could tell, I was like, wow, it's actually pulling harder at low boost. And that was true everywhere. <clears throat> Once I got this uh, you know, tuned, and I got the boost turned back up, it was definitely faster. So I can I measured and you know experienced better performance using a higher efficiency turbo. I know, groundbreaking. So so that was nice. We ran that for a while, uh, for a short while at least, maybe 1,000, 1,500 miles, something like that. And then I just wanted to change it again. Because now at this point, I have a front turbo that's working that shouldn't break, it's ball bearing. But here's the thing, it's like, I was only running 500 wheel, and this front turbo could probably do that on its own. So I've kind of defeated the purpose. The whole the whole reason I did a compound setup was to have a small turbo up front that spooled really well, so I could have my mid-range performance and enjoy the car on the street, and then have the rear turbo to prop up the top end so it was actually fast. So by the time I got to this point, I had a turbo that was reliable, but I had kind of defeated the point of having a compound setup in the first place. So that's when, that's when we thought about this and we said, well, we either need to go back to what we were doing with a smaller turbo up front, or we need to change something. And I'm going to do a second video going over what I think we should have done. So we'll wrap that one up here. I'll have a second video coming out on compound turbos, and I'll talk about what I think I should have done. So this one was more factual based on real world experience. The next one will be a bit more hypothetical just based on my previous experience. All right, guys, take it easy.